Okay, welcome to Aura Online. I am Dr. Sudakshina, Professor of Anatomy. Today we are going to discuss on the anatomy of the ear as such. So, the, if you see the human ear, it is uh, actually a complex nature of mechanisms, uh, machinations and it is having ossicles which are very important ossicles are nothing but the ear bones the bones within the middle ear cavity which is very important for the vibration to go and the labyrinth is like the modification of lateral line system of fish so mainly it has two most important components you have to allow the fluid within the labyrinth to undergo vibration and the vibration is brought about by the ossicles okay so coming to the ear so here we are going to classify the ear into an external ear okay and then we have the extra middle ear which is uh, present in the middle and then you have the internal ear so mainly it has the three classification the external ear which consists of the pinna or the auricle the external acoustic meters you have the external acoustic canal you have the tympanic membrane so it ends at the tympanic membrane which starts the vibration of the tympanic membrane because of the sound waves and then you have the middle ear which is in the center which has the ossicles and the vibration is carried through the middle ear and then which leads the fluid within the labyrinth which is in the inner ear internal ear to start the labyrinth into a fluid movement which actually ultimately is transmitted through the organ of corti and you can see over here these are the nerve fibers which are picking up the vibration and then it is being transmitted to the through the internal acoustic meters and that is the you are having the eighth cranial nerve over here okay so coming to the external ear so external ear you are having three components of the external ear so the pinna is a part so external ear can come as a short note in the curriculum and you have to explain the pinna you have to explain the external auditory canal and also the tympanic membrane so these are the parts of the external ear or the pinna so you can see over here that the pinna is having a helix over here this is the lobule so we'll go to the each part and uh, tell you so the architecture it is mostly cartilaginous and the external ear the cartilage is actually it is cartilaginous and and legionus and the cartilage over here is the elastic cartilage it is very important to remember that external ear cartilage is elastic cartilage and it has various parts which we are going to mainly uh, talk about in the next few slides and this specific architecture of this cartilage which allow the vibration and the sound waves to get reflected within this external acoustic meters and the auditory meters and it travels through the external auditory canal so you can see over here that is the curved part of the pinna which is uh, like starting from here in the medial aspect and goes all around this is called the helix this is the prominence rim of the auricle and this pinna is also called the auricle and the other parts you have just below the helix you are going to see another curved portion and this is called the antihelix so antihelix which is actually helping the sound waves to get reflected correctly within the external auditory meters next coming to the inner aspect just surrounding the external auditory meters we have the concha so this part is called the concha and uh, the upper part simba concha and the lower part is the kevam concha so you have the simba concha upper part and the lower part you are seeing the kevam concha just opposite the concha over here you are having a small pointed eminence uh, in front of the concha and this is projecting also and this is called the tragus so this is the tragus so you have the helix the anti helix then we have the concha and this have the tragus below this where the ear uh, can be pierced through and this part is mainly not having any cartilage it is a fold of skin so lobule is just a skin fold no cartilage no cartilage is present over here and that is called the lobule then just above the lobule you have the small portion which is called the anti tragus so this is the tragus so opposite to the tragus we have the 
and tea triggers. Now coming to the pinna, because sometimes the pinna will be asked and you have to also tell the nerve supply of the pinna and the blood supply of the pinna. So the pinna skin is thin, it is very closely adherent to the perichondrium, elastic cartilage and the on the lateral surface it is covered with fine hair, sebaceous glands are also there and as the skin is closely attached, if any infection of the sebaceous gland, it can be very painful because it is adherent to the uh, perichondrium. Next is you have the cartilage which is in the pinna, I already told you, it is a elastic cartilage, so uh, painful, the pustules and everything is very painful because of the adherent, closely adherent skin uh, to the surface of the cartilage or the perichondrium and what is the cartilage within the pinna? It is the elastic fibrocartilage and it is absent in the lobule. So, it, the lobule does not have the cartilage and it is deficient also between the crux of the helix and the triggers. And it is connected to the temporal bone also by ligaments and intrinsic and extrinsic muscles. And though the, these muscles, the vestigial muscles, they do not have much of functions in moving the pinna and the pinna is immovable in case of humans. Coming to the nerve supply, this can come as a short note. And they can ask you the nerve supply of the pinna. So the sensory supply we are talking about. So you can see this is the entire pinna. It has a anterior aspect, it has a posterior aspect and it has an aspect around the external auditory meters and this is the concha. And the anterior aspect of this is by supplied by the auriculotemporal nerve. Now auriculotemporal nerve is a branch from the mandibular nerve. Okay, so it is a branch from mandibular and it is actually coming from the fifth cranial nerve that is the trigeminal nerve. <music>